she fought for my love, the love is a wash. She give me a heart, she give me a kiss, she love in my drip. I'm giving so hard, and we're all times. American love, American. I trap my design marine, I'm taking a walk on my CCP. She says you're missing me, oh baby, your love is a misery. She says you're missing me, oh baby, your love is a misery. I look at the cover, remember I got it on time. Sorry, when I see crowd, I see that. Okay, good morning, people, sports people, wonderful people. All right, so my name is Angel Salt, aka Angel is on Some people know me here, but I've never body for you. You will shock you say I know you. By your legs, I know you. All right, um, we are here today to connect. Um, it's FC Football Connect. And um, I would like it to be very warm and, you know, cozy and let's just have fun. And most importantly, please pay attention. One man talks, say, one thing where everybody can afford in this life is attention. No, so. You can afford it, whether you're rich or poor. So when I say football, you say connect. Football, 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 football. Yes, yeah, shitty. So when I say... I go, now we say make up. I go, I go, you can report to me. I go, see, see. What is it you call MC? It means I am the master of this ceremony. So if I give you instruction, you know, I bet we don't get bouncers for you. I go, now you be angel. I go, I go, I go, even you this small one once. I go, I go, I go. So I would like to quickly um, bring forth a very gentleman, the person who made it possible for all of us, all of us to be here today. Um, he is not physical, he is spiritual. So if you permit me, I will say you should bow your heads while we take a very, very short prayer to the one that made it possible for all of us to be here today. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time together. We thank you for making this event possible. Lord, throughout the deliberations and everything that will happen here today, let us gain something in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Amen. Now, let me now welcome the human person that's with us to be here today. Please welcome with me the brain behind this wonderful event. I thought you should be clapping already. I thought you should be clapping already. Uh, now I'm going to call you for you. I need to go to you. Okay, so let's have Mr. A Sports, please. I will keep clapping. I will just be clapping. I see he's going to sign my check. I will just be clapping for the guy. I will even stand up for himself. Uh-uh. As soon as we carry all of us come here, it isn't easy. I'm going to thank you very much. My name is not A-Sport. <laughs> right. Um, I like to appreciate everybody uh, for coming out. It's overwhelming. I must say, last year, December 2018, on the 15th precisely, we had our first edition. And in no time, we're already on the second edition. I think we should give a round of applause to the teams that are here today. So you're clapping, you're appreciating yourself. Because without you, we won't be here. So it, nothing makes sense without you guys. Um, I also want to say that it is important for us to please pay attention. We are not here to waste our time. We're not here for jokes. We're here to learn. We're here to gain insights. And we're here to get more knowledge as to 
quadrants of our career. I'm sure many of you guys there seated here, you want to play football professionally, but there are insights that you need directly from the professionals. You know, people go abroad, take pictures, you think that everything is rosy, but there are truths behind the truth, right? Nobody says everything as they say, but we have put this together to make sure that people say everything. Now, it takes a lot of skills and talent to play football professionally, but what sustains you is the attitude. What you need is the attitude. Without the right attitude, no athlete can survive professional level. And there is no athlete that can find his way to the annals of greatness. You are never going to be great with the, without the right attitude. Greatness is accompanied by attitude. Access to the right information, insights, and truths has been a major problem of the ordinary Nigerian like you and I. Growing up, many of us didn't have the right information. Even some of the coaches seated here today, some of the managers seated here today, they wish they had been alive, or maybe they had known how much they know now while growing up. But the reality is that many people have fed on our lack of knowledge. Many people have fed on our lack of insight. So this lack of information has allowed deception to thrive over the years. You know, it is interesting that people make certain decisions that are not based on facts. And then when they now get to a level where they need to make life-changing decisions, the story then is not the same. Now, our team has decided to take up this mantle to change the narrative for the ordinary Nigerian like you and I, so that we can all develop the heart of winners. I want to appreciate all these teams, FC Robo, Spring Soccer, Colin Sedwin, Bagada FC, every team, every player seated here, their club is represented there. Someone asked me someday, how do you get to bring these guys together? I said, it just happened. Somehow. I want to appreciate everybody, and I say a very big thank you. Thank you so much for making our time, and I really appreciate you guys. We appreciate all our guest speakers. Those, see, some people came all the way from France because of you guys. So this is no joke. When I say that this is not a joke, it is not a joke. But when we get to the introductory aspect, the introduction, when we introduce the fellow and every of our guests, we will then understand. Thank you so much. And I hope that you leave here today transformed with your mind renewed. Thank you. Please let's welcome to this front seat. Um, Mrs. Beverly Akbakoba, a woman I respect personally so much. I don't feel like they might have a but I don't get to be. Imagine if I bounce person as I be like this, I be like one. I can't bounce person, I be like, oh. I go, if you're in water, I go, I be like, say, you know, so that's only. You know, possible. So, thank you very much for coming, man. I really appreciate you anytime on social media and everywhere. <laughs> Next time you're traveling to Cairo, please carry on. Please. Yes. If anybody is going here, I'll take you. Oh, you want to? Okay, um, the next person on my list. All right, um, the next person on the call is the chairman of the Football Intermediary Association of Nigeria, the person of Mr. Ayotele Thomas. 
I said they clap, they will clap for you. Ha. I said they clap hard, they will clap hard for you. Ha. Ha. Don't be like Rashidi Yekili for clapping. I said they give you the give them back, you know? Make it a flu, connect. Hmm? Uh -huh. All right, next person is the chairman of Lagos Divisional Football Association, the name of Mr. Tinubu Akinsudi Ahmed. My name is Oluwa Shino Okeleji, and all those things they've said about me, it's true. But um, the reality is, I was just like one of you. I wanted to play football. Because I grew up in Ajegunle, I was born in Ajegunle. And in Ajegunle, all you wanted to do, whether you single or you play football, you know the other things now, you know the other things they do in Ajegunle, I can't mention. So basically, when people hear you come from Ajegunle, um, there is a stereotype. Like, we pick up our phone here. This guy can carry our money, you understand? So those are the kind of stereotypes you have to deal with. And for footballers, um, it was all I wanted to do. I thought I could play football too. Um, but, you know, like that guy pointed out earlier, sometimes you need to face reality and tell yourself, all of you are here, beautiful faces, ambitious young men, you're playing football, you have the talent and everything. But trust me, um, I, it's hard for me to say, not everybody will make it. There will be 10% of you that will make it in football. But you have 100%, 10%, so why not be the 10? Why not be one of the 10%? You understand? Um, Emmanuel Abuliki, he went to the Asia College, you know? And the guy that was actually benching Emmanuel Abuliki at the Asia College, the guy is a popular carpenter in Adjumonet. Abuliki will sit on the bench. We call him Poi. We call Abuliki Poi, that's his nickname. So if you know him, we call him Poi, we look at him. So, those are the kind of people you look up to when you're young. Jonathan Akobori from Adigule, he went to the 85 under 16 World Cup. I wanted to be Jonathan. When I wore Jonathan's shirt at the point, I couldn't sleep. I was looking at it. He said, go play ball. But that's not, the, that's not the reality. Like he said earlier, you have to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. I would urge you to say football should be your plan A and probably plan D. You can have other, you know, like two things in between. Because realistically, you will meet, um, you meet agents who are going to do it. You meet lawyers who are going to lie to you. You meet journalists who, who pretend to be journalists, but they're actually agents and scouts as well for people. You meet liars, you meet honest people, decent people. But trust me, it's the terrain. It's what you're going to face in life. So as you're young, ambitious, and you know, like dreaming of making a career out of football, you need to understand that there are pitfalls as well. Okay. John Ogu is a Nigerian international who plays as a midfielder. Before turning a professional, Ogu had his footballing education at Aqua Starlet, Aqua United, and Flying Sports Academy. Hi, hi, hi. 
Um, so John, um, we have young footballers um, across all parts of Lagos here in this hall. And um, first and foremost, welcome to Footballers Connect um, 2.0, yeah? And um, oh, good morning. Good, good morning, everyone. Yeah. So John, most of them, um, they are not aware of what awaits them in terms of professional football. And you're someone who's gone through um, your journey in Slovenia, Spain, and Portugal, the kind of things you've had to endure. I mean, we'll still come to you being homeless at some point in Portugal. But let's start from, <laughs> let's start from the top. What was life like for you when you left Nigeria for Europe? Thank you, thank you guys for having me on, um, on this um, sh um, program. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I'm not present there because um, I'm in um, Benin for my teammates and wedding, uh, marriage and ceremony. Um, I feel so bad, sad that I'm not there with you guys, but um, I'm, I'm happy to be able to at least uh, speak to you guys in this in this form. Um, yeah, about uh, my journey, you know, when I first started in my career in um, Slovenia, it was, it was really tough, you know, um, I had so many ups and downs when I was growing up. And then um, when I had the chance to leave Nigeria to Slovenia, um, I took this chance to, to myself. I took a risk, which was, um, you know, let's him go my education at that moment. And then um, I had to go further my career in, in Slovenia. And Slovenia was a, was a small country. It's a small country with a um, with population of one million. And then the country where I, I had no idea how it would be like, it was cold, uh, it was tall. We were six, six, six men that, that left from Nigeria to Slovenia. And um, you know, when I was able to, you know, to fight hard you know, to, to, you know, to be where I am today, it wasn't really easy for me. I had so many um, um, setbacks. Um, I had the chance you know, to play under so, so many different managers. But you know, um, I always believe in myself. I always believe um, if I want to be where I want to be in life, I have to put in more effort. Um, it took me so many hard, um, to so many hard work, to do so many um, dedication um, to who I am. So, um, the journey for me in Slovenia was really tough, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to you know, pass through that and you know, then, then I found myself in Ireland, Portugal, after that. Just do a quick recap for you guys. So when John moved to Slovenia, um, John didn't understand the language. Um, John was dealing with some agents that he's never met before as well. You know, these are some of the things that you'll have to um, face as a professional footballer when you move to Europe. First is the language. And also, people will be there who you know, on the phone, and when they are sending emails to you in Nigeria, they'll be assuring you, they'll be treating you like mess. But when you get it, they'll be treating you like sappy room. Because you are a nobody already, and you need to prove to them that you are somebody. But beware, because they will tell you sweet things that you want to hear. All right. But when you get there, the reality is... All right, John. Uh, so, we are with you now. So, John, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh -huh. So, earlier, I was just... Um, explaining to the people in here about the things they need to avoid, the things they need to be wary of when they are moving to Europe. You know, like um, things they need to look out for as a young footballer moving to Europe. What are the things that you need to um, you need to look out for? Um, first of all, they need to uh, they need to be um, they need to be wary of um, of um, of um, bad events, bad um, because. And we, we as footballers, when we go up, you know, when we are about to leave, when we want to go to leave our country, to follow our career abroad, uh, we get so many bad advisors who tell us things that are not true. Uh, we get to meet so many bad agents who are just more focused about the money. They're not focused on the development of the players. You know? So um, these are the key um, things I feel um, the players need to um, focus on. You know? but, um, uh, I think um, if they if they if they can put in their efforts to to believe in themselves more than listen to people bad bad advice, I think it will help them in their future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
testimony about what he went through. Unfortunately, I can't remember his name, but if you Google it. This guy, same thing, what, what's going on in Nigeria? They're playing, they're playing, they're not making enough money. So he got a deal with the team in Turkey, okay? He didn't read the contract. He gets there, they're not paying him. Little did he know, according to FIFA rules, if they don't pay you for more than three months, you're allowed to go. He didn't know. Meanwhile, a Greek team had offered him a better deal, and he was stuck. So really and truly, if you don't get a lawyer, or if you're not too in tune with you know, the details of your contract and what obtained, you will just find yourself stuck. Anyway, long and short, he was able to break out of that contract. Because sometimes, they may pay you for two months, and you're still trapped. 
and then they don't, you know? So you really need to be careful, you know? You really, really need to be careful. These things are happening and they're real. He too was stranded, no money, and you're thinking, but you're an international player. So please, just to be aware, you're not allowed to sign a contract for more than five years, please. If you see a seven-year contract, run, run, please. You're not allowed to sign a contract more than five. Even that five is long. Three years, please. Test the waters. Don't forget that as much as you want to go, you too, you have something to offer, right? If you are there and another club sees you and likes you, you're then stuck. So please be very, very wary of entering long-term contracts. The contract longer than five years, don't do it. In fact, you're, that's bondage, that's slavery. So just... Thank you very much, Mark. So uh, I want to move on to Mr. Ayale Thomas to give us one more experience that you have with players. You put us one, but just give us one more. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, uh, ladies, thank you very much for listening. Um, sometimes it's very difficult to tell Nigerians the truth, but uh, what I'm known for all over the world, not just in Nigeria, that I say it the way it is. The biggest challenge we have as intermediaries it's not all of you. It's the people at the top. I don't want to mention names because this thing is being recorded. But let me give you an example. I had a player once and I called the uh, coach, Kamara, at MFM. And I said, Kamara, uh, this player is very good. Can I send him to your club, train with you? You know what he told me? He said, if he's good, he will have to sign with MFM. And the GO, who is supposed to be the head of overseer, the, the, the deal is the GO takes 80% of any deal that the player gets, and then we will 20%. I asked Kamara, so I asked Gio's uh, son that he would take 80% of the players right. But believe it or not, most of our professional clubs in Nigeria, they are clubs like that, that whenever it will come, they can frustrate the agent because of their unnecessary demand. That's number one. Clubs asking for too much money when a deal comes to an end. And you know, like I always tell players, just get your right leg or your left leg in first. Let the club even see you. Show what you can do. Don't worry about the first deal. The first deal is not always the best deal. But Nigerian clubs don't understand that. They want $100,000, $1 million, $300, and so on. And some clubs in Europe, it's just like Nigeria here. We have uh, grade A clubs, grade B clubs, grade C clubs. We also have grade A countries, grade B countries, grade C countries, and so on. So wages of uh, footballers are different. But if you don't understand that as a club owner, you'll be assuming that this boy is going to Chelsea and the owner of Chelsea is Abramovich, the bil a billionaire. So what is $100,000? And the club is telling you, listen, we will give you $10,000 now. When we sell him, which is called the sell-on deal, we will give you 500,000. Nigerian man wants to go to chop now. And you know why? Because, because of their attitude towards the player, they don't believe that when that player becomes a superstar, he will remember them. So there's a problem with the administration at the top. Then the second challenge we have, according to FIFA rules, 
and I will quote that article, Article 4, on status on working with intermediaries. FIFA specifically said, anybody that is an administrator of football, a sport that has anything to do with the club, or academy, or any sort of thing that has to do with administration, is prohibited from doing the job of an intermediary. Hello, I want to ask what you are saying. Um, one of our major agendas when I resumed the office is to train the coaches and the referees. We are going to have a lot of seminars, a lot of workshops for the coaches and the referees. But they are the ones that will impart knowledge to the players. And then, um, basically, I Basically, we want to sustain that development. Well, what we are doing is actually human capacity development. We want to sustain it. And the only way to sustain it is to train the coaches and the referees. Thank you. Europe is not the only option, as they've said. There's Egypt, there's even Cameroon. You have to also understand the terrain of Africa as well. But there's something that, that hasn't really been mentioned, and that's sporting education. Do many of you know that, for those of you who don't succeed and become professional players, there's actually opportunities to play for universities, right? Get scholarships, get either at home or abroad, and play for universities, provided you're in that age category. And that's a very successful circuit to, to operate in. So I really want us to, I want the major takeaway and I'm sure my colleagues on the panel will agree with me, is that we really, really all want to see this football industry blossom in so many different pathways. The, the story should not be one track. Is Europe or bust? If I don't go to Europe, is it? No. It's about coaching opportunities. It's about the university pathway. There's, there's people who, um, okay, for instance, I did uh, an international tour with my club in April. I went to Juventus and I met a coach there in Juventus. And he actually went through the youth academy and he said to me, when I turned 15, they made all of us go through trials again. That those of us who started in Juventus at 8 had to go through another trial at 15. He wasn't selected. And he was really good. The reason why was because he didn't have the mental capacity, he didn't have the stamina, all those other things. So instead, Juventus created a pathway of coaching. So now he's become a youth coach and he's doing very well. We need to look at the multiple options in this football industry. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I must commend all of you here on you. Podium, you have all spoken well and spoken truthfully. Um, going forward with the, the problem about the need for our the desperation of our players over here in this country to want to go to Europe, um, you can allow that problem to be two ways. One, the slave mentality that most of all we blacks have, that over there is always better than here, and also in a way that our country also has filled us in terms of football. So I want to say that. Since we know this is a problem, how can we help our players over here to make here also enough for them to be able to make a living? Because as a banker, as a banker going through school, you don't look at to go to Europe to go and work in a bank. To work here in Nigeria is enough for you. As a musician, even in the talent you know that musicians, are musicians are ready to stay here in this country and make music and work. So why then in football? Why is our own different? Why must we go there to make a living in football? We should be able to make a living here in football by ourselves. Someone has mentioned something about teaching them education as well. Sheyolo Fijano has stopped playing football. He's a loan manager at Uba Amtin Wonders because he went to school. Engineering, you understand? If he, he's played professionally, he's fall back to uh, work now, his academy. Now they're using him as a loan part-time manager. I already made a for for ES Lazio. He's one of the top agents I know in Europe right now when it comes to Africa because he's registered properly and he has his check done well. You understand? So if you're asking me that question, let me answer it to you now. Let me answer it to you now. He wants to answer you in a different way. But I'm telling you, as far as I'm concerned, as a journalist that have investigated Nigeria Academy, I cannot guarantee you to go to anyone right now as we speak. Because they are not well run. But if you find maybe one of these ones that are running around, um, finding themselves as 
academics, in my opinion. I think what you need to do, keep an eye on your child. Do a protection thing for yourself as well and protect your child. Don't let him get into the hands of greedy agents, you know, scrupulous agents who, who lie to him. There's a contract in Turkey. There's nothing for you out there. The truth is if your child is good enough, Imagine, somebody mentioned under 17 years when we were talking. Nigeria under 17, you have NFF members having players in the under 17. Take the true under 17 to go there. They don't beat them. Not like they're not good enough. But who do they know? Who, do they, who are their coaches? Where are they coming from? How can you go to World Cup and you have players who are under, you know, like, it doesn't work that way. I get emotional and passionate. I was talking to myself, I should not get involved in Nigeria. Let us just be playing around. But the truth is, you've asked an honest question. I deserve an honest answer. Bro, our under, from our under 17 to the super egos, corruption all the way down. And it's so sad. It's so sad. Two scholars don't get a chance. So, good luck with your child. Good luck. Keep praying and hoping that things will, things will go well for him. Thank you. Thank you. Why is our sport not like the ones in abroad, in Europe? Why are they not paying that much uh, funds to the players? It's simple. Now, like it's an oil. Everybody, everything is interwoven with oil, both the public sector and private sector. And it's where we can create that atmosphere that the sport, football, can actually be used as another source of income of the government, where they can see that people can use another source of income. That's when they will invest properly in sports. So it's, it's something that affects every aspect. In Lagos State alone, ask the of mirrors, have we really exploited those minerals? No. We've got to other various states, they have various minerals. Nigeria is blessed. But we have not exploited those things because we are all dependent on oil. So basically what I would do, or what my team would do, is to convince the private sector for them to sponsor go matches and then also try and um, educate the government and the public sector and tell them and show them that actually sports can grow their idea. So basically, that's what we do. We keep begging, we keep feeding. Thank you very much. Uh, um, let me also add to that. Uh, I'm not doing this because they are here, but um, this particular season in the NLU, there is a team, they are here right now, Bagada FC. You see, maybe after this, see a video of me for the Super Eagles. I've written only two sports points, I mean, what? The last one I wrote was for them. They've not seen it yet, but it's going to be a bomb. Now, now listen, I'm so inspired to do that for them because I can't remember the last time I, I watched the game in Lagos and I paid to, to, to enter. The first day I watched that game, I actually bought like about five tickets. How many of us here will buy tickets to go and watch games? That same day, some, somebody said something that got me really annoyed. The person said, how can easy we should pay to enter? And their last game yesterday was free, everybody was there yesterday. So the thing is in our mentality. I mean, we don't believe we should pay for it, but we believe we should get paid for it. It's, it's, it's sickening, it's sad. So please, you only to come out, try and start paying for these things. Try and pay for things. I mean, when you the stage, come and pay for it. You pay for the game and go and watch. Yes, yeah, let's start generating the phone from here. That's what I was now. So the next, the next question.